Good evening, everybody. Good evening. How are you? Good evening. Hello. Okay, so we've got the meeting started. Um, Rochelle, the next thing on the agenda is the roll call, if you would please. Michael O'Connor is going to be absent. Vlad Dumitrescu? Here. Robert Cohen? Here. Alexander Candia? Here. Garland Williams? Here. Rochelle, did we hear anything from uh, either Ronald Evans or Carol Fredericks, our two alternates? Yes, I heard from Carol Fredericks. She said that she was going to be joining the meeting. I emailed her again today and left her voicemail. I don't see her on. Okay, anything from Ronald Evans? Nothing, no. Okay. All right, if, if either of them connect after we start, we can uh, promote them. So help me i'll try to keep an eye on the attendee list and and we'll promote if if somebody shows up afterwards okay great um next on the agenda is the approval of the agenda Anthea, is there any changes to the two quasi dish items we have there are no proposed changes to the agenda Great. And then as a reminder, um, chairs uh, can't make a motion without passing the gavel. So we need someone other than um, our chair, Mr. Garland, to make a motion to go ahead and approve that agenda. So moved. Great. And that was Mr. Cohen, Rochelle. Yeah. We have a second. Yes. Second. Second. Great. And I think we had... Um, Mr. Candia, the second there. You That's got correct. That, Great. And then uh, this can just be everybody can just say aye if you're in approval of the agenda. Aye. 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 Great. Thank you, everybody. Uh, next item on there is uh, approval of minutes. There's minutes from February 4th uh, draft. Are there any, uh, anybody have any proposed changes to those? No. 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 But same thing. You just need a, a motion with the second for approval. So moved. I, I second it. Uh, you know, Mr. Williams, you, uh, Garland, you, you can't motion or second. You're you're the one in charge, okay. everybody. So I'll we second. Have, second. Great. So we had the same first and second on that, Rochelle. And this can be, again, just everyone in favor, just give us an aye. 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 Great. Thank you, everybody. Uh, Rochelle, do we have any general public comments for non-agenda items? We do not. Okay. Uh, Mr. Williams, do you have the quasi-judicial um, rules, the little blurb that we, we read with you? You know, I, I, I'm i sorry, I asked earlier, I do not have it in front. Do you mind standing in front of me? Um, Garland, uh, Diane sent you an email. I don't know if you're able to access it Oh, now. no, I, okay, let me look. Yeah, okay. I can do it, hold on. Okay. I'm I'm sorry. I, I I do not see it here. I'm so sorry.
No problem. I'm trying to see if I have a copy here on my desktop somewhere. I think Falad uh, has a copy, or Mr. Cohen has a copy. I, yeah, I have a copy up on my screen. I can read it if you want. Yeah, Mr. Cohen, if you don't mind, that'd really help us out. Yeah. Sure. This hearing shall be conducted in accordance with the City of Delray Beach quasi-judicial rules. The applicant and the city shall be permitted to present their case. The public shall be allowed to speak for three minutes each or a maximum of six minutes if the person represents an organization or a group of people who are present but agree not to speak. The city commission board member, staff, and the applicant may be allowed to cross-examine the witness. The city or the applicant will be allowed to offer rebuttal testimony. The decision to approve or deny an application or appeal may not legally be made upon personal views as to whether a project is a good project or not, nor may a decision be based on the numbers of citizens who support or oppose a particular project. The law requires that all decisions must be made on the basis of whether the project meets the requirements of law, the comprehensive plan, and the line development regulation. And I don't know if you want me to step through these or summary of the processes, number one, swear witnesses, et cetera. No, we don't we don't need any more than than that, Mr. Cohen. Thank you very much. Sure enough, sure enough. Great. So that brings us um, to the quasi-judicial items. So the first item is uh, file 115 Northeast 16th Court. Uh, as a reminder, with the virtual format, because we don't do the mass swearing in, we'll need the applicant and anybody on their behalf, as well as the city staff member, to go ahead and be sworn in by Rochelle. May I, may I just jump in and say I need to say something about ex parte? Okay, let's get everybody sworn in and then we'll we'll ask about the ex parte. Everybody is everybody Okay. I have uh, Ron Brito and I have Kenneth Bello Bello and the D family. Mr. Charles. D. Sorry. And Brian. Right. Okay, please raise your right hand. I don't, Mr. Bello, um, I don't see your video's not on. <clears throat> there we go. Okay. And is Mr. and Mrs. Uh, D there? I think you may have not promoted them yet, Michelle. Yeah, I, uh, they were. I don't know whether they got this. Oh, there they are again. Okay. okay. Terry and Charlie D. Hi, we're here. Hi. Do you have video? Um, I, I, I've been <laughs> trying to get this video to work for <laughs> since we started. Um, I can see all of you. Um, so I, I have my hand raised. <laughs> <laughs> do you see a button at the bottom that says start or stop video? It's oh, now video. I do. Okay. okay. Here we go. <laughs> Hi. Okay. Very good. Okay. Everybody please raise your right hand. By the authority vested in me as a notary of the state of Florida, do you swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. 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 Thank you. Great, thank you, everybody. Uh, Mr. Cohen, uh, you mentioned you have some ex parte, so let's get uh, board members. You have any ex parte communications? Go ahead and get those on the record now. Uh, I don't have any ex parte. Okay. Mr. Cohen, you're muted. In the background. Okay, uh, I do have an ex parte, I believe. I received a new uh, phone call today about noon from a person, uh, help me if I need a name, uh, who's a neighbor of mine and a friend of mine, but also uh, is involved in city politics, is on another board. He wanted to let me know that he knew about the one case coming up today. Uh, I believe it's a number two item on the, on the agenda. And he wanted to let me know, and I, he spoke and I listened. He wanted to let me know that a number of what he called the powers that be in the city are interested in preserving the historical nature of this neighborhood. 
Okay, and Mr. Cohn, was that about the 1221 Lang Street you said, the second item? Yeah. Okay, let's let's uh, wait for that item just to make sure that it's very concise and that they know that it's related to that. Did you have any ex parte for the 115 Northeast 16th? No. Okay. Uh, Vlad, I saw your hand up. Did you have anything? No, no. no. All right. So we've addressed the um, ex parte. And Thea, I think you said you're taking over since, or I see Brian's actually on this. Brian, are you the. I am the presenter, if it's possible to get the ball. So I can just start sharing. There you go. All right, everybody, Brian Rusher, Transportation Planner for the, the record. i um, like to enter into the file 115 Northeast 16 Court 2021-097-VAR-BOA. Uh, here with us today is Mr. Ron Brito, Mr. and Mrs. D, and Mr. Uh, Blue with uh, the consultant team. Uh, Ron, what I'm going to do now is, and how this will work, is I'm going to pull up the materials you sent over, and I will share that. Um, so just give me one second in terms of sharing the correct screen. Okay, so everybody should be able to see a, a short justification statement that was submitted. Juan, could you confirm for us that you see it? And you're you're muted still. <laughs> Yes, I do. I see it. I have a copy in front of me. Okay. Uh, feel free to go ahead and um, present your materials, information. Okay, well, basically, uh, it's uh, the first one is, uh, is describe which kind of special conditions and circumstances exist, which are uh, peculiar to the land, particular to the land structure or building involved, and are which... Uh, which are are not generally applicable to other land structures or buildings subject to the same zoning. The matter of economic hardship will not uh, constitute a basis uh, for the granting of a variance. And basically, what we did is uh, we said that our comment on that was uh, the circumstances of the land, which are not generally applicable to other lands uh, subject to the same zoning. The existing subdivision is served by a 40-foot uh, right-of-way uh, without sidewalks. The first new build on the street that has uh, become uh, the subject of the right-of-way expansion where the city is requiring dedication of the front five feet of property for a sidewalk. The all A zoning Front setback is 30 feet for all existing residential structures. Compliance with this setback diminishes the usable area for the replacement structure and misaligns it with the existing structure. And uh, section B, uh, describe which uh, literal interpretation of the regulations would deprive the applicant of the rights that have been commonly enjoyed by other companies. Uh, subject to the same zoning and our answer to that is uh, uh the expansion of the right-of-way moved the front property line north reducing the depth of the lots platted less than 100 feet in depth for a single family residence with 30 foot front setbacks and 10 foot rear yard and and a 10 foot rear setback for the yard uh, the use of the lot is diminished by reducing the usable floor area or reducing the regionally important uh, outside recreation and pool area. Uh, the next is uh, Section C. Explain the special conditions and circumstances that have not resulted from the actions of the applicant. That says that the has built uh, the as built plans of the street driveway and utilities were purchased from the city at the beginning of the project. My architect did that. Uh, design was developed for the uh, client and general contractor, and, and I requested a staff uh, uh, pre construction meeting uh, for, uh, to review the construction documents. Uh, cursory re review found no uh, problems with the proposed plans. Uh, me and Mike, Mike looked, it looked them over and he said that they looked okay. Didn't, he didn't say anything that stood out to him. And he said the construction documents were, then the construction documents were completed 
and submitted for plan review, at which time an engineering comment arose requiring a five-foot dedication of a channel lot to the city for a sidewalk where none existed on the street. And uh, section D uh, explained the granting variance uh, that referred to the applicant and the special privilege that is denied to other land structures buildings under the same zoning. The requirement for the variance is not uh, the dedication of the sidewalk area, but the release of the 30 foot setback requirement. Uh, the client is requesting that the new structure be placed on the footprint uh, of the original residence uh, with the 25 front setback. This will allow the city's, to, uh, the city's desire for a sidewalk uh, in the future and still allow the owner's utilization uh, utilization aligned with the neighboring residences. It keeps them all in the line then. Uh, basically, if we, if we did that, we would have to set it. It would mis be misaligned with the rest of the, the whole block. Uh, and uh, section E, this is part of the reason set forth in the variance petition just find the granting of the variance and that the variance is a minimum variance that will make uh, possible no uh, reasonable use of the land building or structure and it said uh, our answer to that was the intent of the city's demand of dedication of a portion of the owner's lot is to eventually install sidewalks by increasing the right-of-way by five feet on each side of the street. In order to achieve this goal, it will be necessary for either to either take the area from each lot owner or wait until the intermediate time when all residents are replaced at, as this one owner proposes. Where the goal is achieved with existing residences, uh, the front setback will automatically be 25 feet. It is reasonable to grant this variance, variance for something that will be necessary for achieving the city's long-term goal. And uh, F is explain how granting the variance will be in harmony with the general purpose of the intent of the existing regulations that will not be injurious to the neighborhood or otherwise detrimental to the public welfare. Uh, and that is, uh, the city's demand is based on in, in, internal decisions to widen the right of way, and it's assumed. Oh, wait, explain how granted the birds. Uh, uh, the city's demand is based on the internal uh, decisions to widen the right of ways. If it is assumed that the base, it is assumed that this is based on the best information. <clears throat> public health, care, and welfare. This request does not impede or obstruct that goal. And the G is please provide any other comments which may uh, or can be uh, relevant to the to assist the board in doing this uh, request. Uh, the homeowners are uh, Charlie and Gary. They're, they're both uh, new, uh, new people in our area. They come down, they purchased a piece of property, they found it, they like the area, they like the neighborhood. Uh, and when we proposed to uh, uh, rebuild the house, we went and looked at the house and the house, the basic structure was, uh, and the, the floor was cracked, the uh, uh, plumbing, all the underground plumbing underneath the slab was bad and leaking. And we felt that just to be uh, more uh, advantageous to take the whole structure down rather than to cut up all the floors and replace all the concrete and try to raise all the tie beams up the height, then it would be easier and about the same cost as uh, to rebuild. So they put a lot of money and time and effort into this project. When uh, when we came in and asked Mike about the uh, how the how the uh, pre-construction plans looked, he said he didn't see anything that was that stood out to him. He said to go ahead and turn it in. So we did. And then later, after we did turn it in, we found out this was the situation. But uh, we're not trying to change the city's requirements. We're just trying to get an easement, uh, keep the house in line with the rest of the houses on the block. And uh, that's our, our basic request is uh, not, not to uh, disregard the sidewalk or anything. It's basically for the easement on the uh, 
uh, make it a 25 foot setback and as the rest of the houses are right now so that would still look uh, it would conform to the rest of the neighborhood and uh, it should be uh, it give you a, a, a better looking neighborhood without one house set back further than the rest of them that's it so that concludes Roberto, yeah, I was going to ask, is there any more evidence or any other statements you want to throw on the record before we pass it over to Well, I, I, uh, I, if you, you notice on the, uh, I, I submitted a, a photographic uh, top view of the neighborhood where it shows all of the houses in line. And uh, I don't know if you have that with you that I sent in. I do. You just have. I, I closed the folder, so I'll have to just get to it in one. Let me navigate. On there. The, on the picture there. Apologize. On the picture there, it shows. I don't know if you can see the lines that I put in, but it shows all the houses in line. Uh, on uh, 16th Court, and uh, where's it at? It's, uh, where's 16th Court? It's this one here, and it? no, it's. Uh, I believe it's this right here. Yeah, it's the pool right, right here. Right here. If you notice the lines that I put on the paper, they're all in line. This is a, and this is a, even this is a 30 uh, 30 foot setback now. And if and if we moved our house back another five feet, it would be an odd looking house with the rest of the block. And all the ones on the other side are all uh, in line with each other. And basically we're trying to keep that same harmony look uh, and keep them all in line when we drive down the street. It's not in and out, in and out. They're all in line. And uh, we have that same situation over here on the, this is... 17th Street or 16th uh, Street here and uh, right here 16th Street this is 16th Court and I think this is 17th they're all in the line on one side but on the other side there's a street that comes in down here that it doesn't so the alignments aren't aren't correct but all three of these in this block area all of the houses are in line and uh, this would be one of the only houses that would be set back. And I, I think it would look a little odd. Uh, basically, what he's doing, the owner is just, you know, what we're asking the owner to do to give up 100 square feet of uh, building area on his property. And he's willing to accept, uh, he, he's, uh, he would like to keep the house in its original state as it was in when uh, when he bought the property. And that was our uh, intent uh, to replace it, uh, replace the existing residence. Okay, anything else, Mr. Perdo? Uh Ken, would you want to say anything? Is that uh, Mr. Blue? Uh, yeah. uh, oh, I think uh, the, the idea of uh, allowing the uh, 25 uh, is something that's some, is something that time is going to occur on the whole street if you get a 25 foot uh, the wider right away. So uh, 25 feet will be consistent all through uh the street yeah it would be uh it would be conducive with the rest of the neighborhood it would just uh it would keep everything in line and i don't you know we're not opposing the dry uh the sidewalk uh, the sidewalk is fine we'll keep the sidewalk we would just like to keep the alignment of the house the same uh otherwise if we have to go back and try to move that house back another uh feet that would take off three and a half feet of their master bedroom. And uh, they're not willing, and that, that would be a, a deal breaker on the whole house, on the whole project. So they're, uh, they're speculating whether or not to even build or not, uh, depending on your 
on the outcome of the of the setback. So uh, anything else, or pass it to Brian? Pardon? Uh, anything else, or are we ready to pass it to Brian? That should be good. Great, thank you, Brian. Go ahead and see his presentation. Let me get that queued up. Make sure that it's sharing, and it's not sharing the correct screen. So just give me one second. Let me shift it over. Could you go back to that uh, that drawing that uh, that showed the uh, uh, site plan? I'm giving you one second, Mr. Brito, if you'd like a little bit more time. Yeah, it just just to go over that site plan real quick. That's one thing I submitted and I didn't even get a chance to comment on. Okay, I um, if okay, I could sh show you this picture just briefly. Brian, if the site plans in your presentation. Uh, yes, yeah, I'm getting to that right now. Right there. Okay. So, uh, this was our, uh, uh, this was the property line before. Basically, this would be the new uh, sidewalk here coming straight through. And basically, we're, we're, we're uh, I didn't go right to the bare me uh, maximum of the 10 foot. We, we set it back 11 feet. So there'd be a little extra space in there. But if we was to take up back five feet, it would take three and a half feet off the master bedroom back here. And that would just, that, you know, that just spoils the whole plan of <laughs> the whole interior renovation. But, uh, this is uh, this would all stay in line with the rest of the houses here. The driveway would just the the, the sidewalk would just be going through the uh, the side open start right here and go straight through. But uh, that's the whole difference. This is the 25 foot setback. Now the property line used to be right there. The property line now would be back to here. Yeah, and that's where our setback was from 30 feet. And if we had to go back 30 feet, we pushed it back to right here. I don't see it be detrimental to the uh, neighborhood. And it's, I think we're, we try to keep the same uh, look throughout. So that's all I wanted to point out. Okay. So thank you. Uh, all right. Thank you, sir. I will flip back to my first slide. Um, just to remind everybody, Brian, you're your transportation planner. Uh, today we're looking at 115 Northeast 16th Court. Um, the property in question is two parcels west of Northeast 2nd Avenue, also known as Seacrest. It's zoned single family residential. Um, everybody hear me okay? Just thumb, somebody give me a thumbs up. Okay, great. Um, in 2020, the home was purchased by the D family, and it was found that there were some substantial structural plumbing and other issues associated with the property to which uh, the property was demolished for those reasons. Um, in 2020, a uh, free application meeting uh, of, uh, was held between Mr. Brito and Mr. Michael Vinci. Um, I don't have those specific dates. There's no official record of that meeting being held, but um, Mr. Vinci meets with lots of people and he typically only looks within property lines. He doesn't look at the right-of-way dedications that are associated with it. So that's likely one of the reasons why this wasn't found in the, in the pre-application meeting. So when a new building permit, a request for a new construction came in, that goes across city departments. And that also triggered a right-of-way dedication requirement and construction of a sidewalk requirement. So what does that mean? So when you request a five-foot dedication of right-of-way, that would take five feet of property from a residence or be dedicated for a residence to the public uh, for the use of uh, the public rights-of-way. What's held in the public right-of-way is sidewalks, city drainage for the street by a swale, uh, stormwater, utilities, and many other things are placed within the public right-of-way. 
But what happens when you dedicate that five feet of right of way, your setback then moves back five feet because your property line is moving five feet. So as Mr. Brito stated in his case, uh, because this was a full demolition, uh, this, this uh, essentially triggered the requirements. Well, we have many requirements for when a right of way that is dedicated, but new construction is one of them. Other uh, typical requirements are when you're adding more than 25% gross square feet. So this is something that the city does very frequently. We've been requesting right of ways for some time, but for this particular case has to deal with a demolition and then a rebuild. And because the uh, property line is potentially moving back, the developable area uh, would be impacted, meaning where the building would fall. As you can see, the proposed property line, these are you know approximations, would move back about five feet. And the proposed setback would then be have to be located as into where the homes was originally planned. And what the applicant is proposing today is to establish a new setback of 25 feet for their residents at 115 Northeast 16th Court. As Mr. Brito stated, this is a very scientific way of illustrating the alignment of the homes on the 115 Northeast 16th Court. We drew a straight line across and you can tell that there's maybe a little bit of overhang from some of the roofs, but generally these properties uh, were platted designed and the streets kind of all fall within a straight line of the area. This was a picture of a street view of the property from May 2011. The home was still constructed at this point. As it stands, the, the lot is currently vacant. Um, there is no structure that's located at this property. So what is before you today is a request for a variance. This is typically, uh, there are six conditions that must be found, uh, found, six findings, I should say. They're located on the screen. They're also located on the staff report. I'm not going to read to them all of you. Mr. Brito did a, a thorough overview of the six findings. I will go into just a minimal amount of the staff report with you. Um, so the applicant uh, has a piece of land which is applicable and that requirement is applicable across all of the zoning districts. Everybody in the city needs to meet the requirement for providing a dedication when it comes to cross. Um, Early parcels in single family residential zoning districts meet the minimum lot requirements based on the LDRs. Um, the R1AA zoning requires a 30 foot um, setback. So that is something to consider. Typically we get these right of way dedications from property owners when they're doing a 25% expansion to their property, not when there's been a full demolishment and, and a new construction. So that is something that's unique to this property that it's it's a little bit different from how we typically go about getting our dedications. Um, the special conditions and circumstances, uh, the new residential structure, it's, it's required at time of permitting. I think there is a case to be made for the process that this went through and the that uh, went through the city. Um, as the applicant stated, they're willing to construct the sidewalk um, and the, the home would be placed along the same location. So not much would change necessarily for this property. It's just that, um, the applicant uh, has obviously demonstrated that the, the case that is being made here to the board. The applicant seeks relief through a variance, which would provide them with a setback of less, less than that of the other properties. Um, that's Yes, that would be unique. However, when a dedication would come across in this neighborhood, we typically would get that dedication and those homes would remain in the same place and the setbacks would then not be modified anyway. It's just that this, this circumstance is that it's an entirely new build. So that's, again, what makes this case uh, peculiar for the board to consider. The last, I believe, two items, um, the setbacks required for this property are located in table 434K, which includes the 34th setback. Um, the applicant's request is obviously to set the building 25 foot back. Um, there are other conditions which are peculiar to this. Of note, the 10 foot general utility easement in the back of the property, which could impact other things and uses of the property. Um, and then the request for the variance um, will not be injurious to the neighborhood, otherwise detrimental to the public welfare. Um, the resulting of this would generally not be injurious to the neighborhood as has been demonstrated by the applicant, you know, placing a home where a home once was, um, building a sidewalk within the community generally would not be injurious. It's just that when the 
precedent the board has to consider is when a de demolishment of a single family home occurs in this zoning district and the implications of if there is a full de demolishment building permit and then the conditions similar to what the applicant has put forward. And I do have a uh, options for board motion, but I believe that because this is a quasi judicial item, uh, we will need to have a quick break. Mr. Bennett, is that correct? Yes, yeah, just a reminder for the board with the virtual format, uh, we take a five minute break after the two presentations to allow the public uh, to leave a voicemail. Uh, the voicemail message indicates that they are confirming that they were sworn in. Um, so at, at this time, unless Brian, you have any more information to add? I do have a quick uh, clarification for the record. Um, in the board report, doc board report, the finding C uh, noted that it would be by finding the request is consistent for a motion of denial. Please just use the text that is reflected on the screen for your records. And then also in the board report, the mailers and notifications were provided on February 20th, 2021, not 2020. So just a, a thank you, quick note for that. Um, those are the only two corrections for the record and my presentation is complete. And as a reminder for the applicants, um, when we come back, we'll have the opportunity for questions of one another, if there are any. Great, thank you, Brian. Um, so at this time, 540. So we'll take that mandatory five minute break and come back at approximately 545, 546. Um, just a reminder to the board during the break, you are free to turn your cameras off and um, mute yourselves as well as the applicants. Just a reminder, you are still live streaming and the public can see you um, though we're taking a five minute break. Okay, all right, thank you everybody. We'll see you in about five minutes. Thank you.
Hi, my name is David D'Angelo. Hey, Brian, I want to thank you for all your help. That's, that's okay. Ron, no problem, Ron, but just hold your comments okay. until we can officially be uh, gaveled again. Okay. No problem. Thank you. All right, uh, board, we have taken um, our five minute uh, break, but we're having um, an issue I'm helping Rochelle with with voicemails uh, briefly just to make sure that we're going to listen to them all. So if you'll just give us maybe another two or three minutes, um, we'll be able to proceed with the public comment. I hit, yeah. on, I hit on mute. I can't hear. What happened? Nobody's <laughs> saying anything yet. <laughs> we're, we're in a brief recess. We, we have to check the voicemails and make sure that they're applicable to the to this item. So just give us just give us a few more minutes. Okay. Thank 
Mira. Charlie, I'd hit your mute button until I get ready to start. I, I think we're on, Ron. Yeah. We're, we're hearing your background noise, Charlie. You might want to mute your mic until everybody comes back. Thank you. You're good. Appreciate it. Okay, sorry about that, um, everybody. Rochelle had some voicemails that came in before the meeting, and the only way she can listen to them is if she plays them uh, for the public. So we just wanted to make sure what item they were for. So I was helping her with IT to figure that out. So uh, we are ready to resume. I think we're missing um, Vlad. There we go. Perfect. Uh, Rochelle, do we have any public comment for this item? There are no public comments for this item. Okay, great. So um, at this point, Mr. Brito, do you have any additional information or um, any questions uh, for Mr. Rusher about anything that was presented? Uh, no further questions at all. Uh, just that I, I, I think this would be, uh, I don't think it would be detrimental to the neighborhood at all. We would try to it would conform back to its original status as where the house was to begin with. And uh, it'd be a little, if, if uh, any kind of a minor adjustment in the neighborhood other than that, just the presentation would be a lot better. <laughs> the new house there. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Brian, do you have anything um, to add or for cross-examination? No, Mr. Bennett, I do not. Thank you. All right. Um, Chair, this is the board discussion portion, so um, you guys are feel free to ask questions and discuss. Okay. So, Robert, Vlad, or Alex, um, what does anybody have a take on this? That they like I, to share. I, I have a, I have a one question. The um, the applicant has stated a couple of places that, and it's repeated in the staff report. The proposed building footprint matches the footprint of the previous single family home, which was demolished due to plumbing, roofing, and foundation issues. However, if you compare the aerial photograph, which showed the existing, the previous house that has been demolished, uh, it's basically a rectangular house. There's some sort of porch or screen room or something in the rear. But if you compare that to the site plan, the site plan is not a rectangular house. It's uh, certainly much different in, in appearance. And I just, and I don't, don't know how important they're relying on the statement that they're building a new a new house on the same footprint when in fact the drawing of stone shows that that's the case. Brian, can you answer that or qualify that a little better? So my interpretation and the information that I had was that as close as the footprint could be matched to the previous structure, you notice that there is a little bit of a back uh, porch on this property that would fill out where the previous uh, that I mean, this is the, a picture aerial again of the previous structure. Um, it doesn't exactly match the building footprint per se. I believe what they're what, the, what they were trying to say and what is being said in the staff report. And I'll let Mr. Brito and his architect confirm is that as close as it can match to the footprint of the prior building with some minor modifications to where maybe the front porch, as you mentioned, Mr. Cohen, um, uh, and maybe the back is, is slightly modified. It's, it's it's fairly close. It might not be an exact uh, piece, but I think the, the important thing that they, they really wanted 
for discussion while taking your note into consideration was the front setback. Um, but generally, the home footprint matches closely what was previously constructed. Mr. Brito? Correct. Uh, basically, when I said when I said to uh, match the same footprint, I was referring basically to the front setback. Uh, we have the same set. We have the same. That's why I drew those lines on our pictures, showing that the front setbacks were all the same. This house here, the front setback would be the same. There, there, there is a. It would be kind of uh, funny just to build the same exact house in the same exact footprint. Uh, and they were, uh, they want to enlarge it a little bit so that the back section of the house here has been enlarged. They had a back patio right here uh, like that, but it was uh, a, like a temporary type of uh, uh, shed roof, uh, little patio on the back. So basically what we've, got, we've added is this section here. And back down to here, this is a, be the only difference that would be from the original footprint. And their footprint was straight all the way across the front. Ours has a little more unique uh, uh, setback to give it a, a little bit better variation uh, uh, for a new house. No, I understand. I just then to confirm the side and rear setbacks are all met with the new design. As I, as I understand yes. it's your site plan, right? Yes, thank you. Side, side setbacks are, are, are still the same. Uh, the only thing that's not the same, like I said, to begin with, is this rear setback right here. That's, uh, that's going to be the difference. But this portion here, coming down to here, right here, this is a, a, would be a, in addition to what uh, uh, that wasn't there before. I understand. Thank you. No, thank you, Mr. Cohen. That was an astute observation. I have a question as well, Brian. That's Alex. The um the original property line versus the proposed property line is that five feet to accompany or to uh, uh, accommodate a sidewalk? To, uh, that is for the construction of a sidewalk. Yes, but there are other elements which also go within the right of way. For example, stormwater management from the city street goes into the swale. We need that to yep. manage the water that comes out. Water lines, sewer lines, et cetera, are also housed in the public right of way. Um, and yep, from, I, been, I remember that from your presentation um, earlier. Mm -hmm. You were yes. outlining everything that was accommodated within that. But right. the original property line, um, or I'm sorry, the proposed property line, that that didn't obviously didn't exist when the home was first built. So if if you know the physical structure of the uh, of the sidewalk or any of the other kind of accommodations that are made for stormwater, et cetera, which I think can be done, you know, seamlessly with a lawn, et cetera. Uh, but would that would solve the issue and give the thirty the, the thirty foot required setback? If you were measuring from the original property line, is that correct? So I can uh, maybe I can answer your question by giving a little bit of history in relationship to the dedications. So previously, the comprehensive plan prior to well, our, our new comprehensive plan adopted in 2020 required a 60 foot right of way for streets such as the one uh, on Northeast 116th Court. When we had, we had lots of issues with a 60 foot dedication. So prior to the adoption of this plan, we would have required a 10 foot dedication. And we were getting a lot of requests such as this. Um, and we had to have a lot of uh, variances, discussions about how we were going to go about resolving it. Um, when we updated the comprehensive plan, we, uh, we brought the standard down from 60 to 50 feet. Um, and that was primarily so that we could address utilities such as water lines, sewer lines, et cetera, sidewalks, streets uh, with accompanying swale, all into 50 feet that's dedicated to the right of way. Um, the properties in this neighborhood, when they were all platted, they were platted at approximately 100 feet deep uh, and then varying widths, depending on you know, what property you're looking at. Some of them subdivided and have changed. But the streets were all platted to be 40 feet wide. 
So that's why you'll see, and I think that brings up the peculiarity of this case with respect to, you know, we, we can request a dedication of five feet in the construction of a sidewalk when a property increases its building square footage by 25%. And that's how we get typical, typically that's how we get most of the dedications. This one, because it was a complete teardown, kind of triggered something differently within with the respect for this. And I think that's why it's important to bring it to the BOA to make the determination. Did that did that answer your question? Yeah, yeah, and it, it did because what I'm what I'm trying to understand is, you know, are we forcing the kind of the front of the house back with an LDR when when I think um, they made a great point of every there's a lot of uniformity in this neighborhood. I know that I I live nearby, I've driven through it, I'm familiar with the neighborhood. So it see it I'm just trying to understand kind of holy right but and what, one of the what is pushing this back so one of the ways that we went about addressing the sidewalk requirements in the past was through an easement and the easement doesn't affect the property line but the policy position of the city now is that this, the city needs to have holistic control of the right of way because easements can get kind of um, messy and nuanced and so the engineers determined that a dedication is better when we have entire control of the right of way, we have the right to go and fix the sidewalks when we need to, rather than requesting permission from property owners to go and fix a sidewalk, which we've uh, either constructed or they've constructed and we need to get permission from them to do. So that's why the change in policy is um, so abrupt. Um, it won't, won't affect most properties, I would say, and with the exception of where there is a complete teardown such as this one. Um, and there are mechanisms in place to try to catch this as early as we can. But as I said and stated before, um, with single family homes, they're a little bit different than most other construction. They they only we generally only look within the property lines, not necessarily without outside of them. So that's why this one is up. Thank you, Brian. Thank you. Alex. Um, Vlad, anything? explains a lot of things that I was about to ask. Now I understand better because for the moment I thought perhaps in the future things like this could be dealt administratively without going through virus, but obviously that's not the case. And I understand now how this affects future planning. And I do have one unrelated relatively question uh, that I always I live nearby. So I'm curious about what happened on the area that is actually part of the right of way. Does that fall under the maintenance of the owner of the home house in terms of irrigation and landscaping? Typically, that's what happens. But that's a fun question. <laughs> yeah. So the swale in front of your home is managed by the property owner. If there is something on Swinton Avenue, for example, there is we have traffic calming uh, bulb outs, which is where there is a concrete curb adjacent to the road. The city typically manages that unless the homeowner wishes to install their own upgraded landscaping and irrigation, et cetera. But the landscaping in front of your house and in the public right of way is the responsibility of the homeowner. Um, and you know, if you have a specific question, I'm happy to answer it and get it to our team and public works, okay. but generally that's our policy. Okay, no, it makes sense. I just was, it's interesting. I didn't know that. Now I understand it. Thank you, Brian, that was really, I really understood a lot much better. I was unclear. So I, I don't have any questions. I'm ready to, uh, to vote on it. Yeah, yeah, it's, um, you know, it's a pretty straightforward for most of it. And the, the adoption of the plan if today, if they had this plan, this house was um, taken down. What date was this house taken down? Mr. Bruno, you're muted, but could you answer that for us? I believe you have that. Oh, oh, August, wasn't it? August of last year. Okay. So then merely the, the new um, changes were, were coming about, but we really, they really weren't solid in anybody's mind per se, for the most part. Is that correct, Brian? 
Yeah, basically, when I went into the city to do a pre-construction meeting, there were no notices and stuff on there about the right-of-way. And then about a month and a half later, when we came in and started to have to that we'd have to go in for the right-of-way, went in there, and they had notices on the uh, on the uh, counter out there about the right-of-way, uh, which would have been really advantageous to us if we would have seen one of those when we first went in for that pre-construction meeting. But uh, I, I understand it's just getting off the ground, and you're, you're trying to uh, push that uh, that right away. And uh, I wish we'd have known about it ahead of time; we could have adjusted the house accordingly. Then. All right. Well, this is a uh, this is kind of tough, but it's really not tough in some ways. And the rest of the street, as far as the sidewalks being installed. How will the rest of the street be be part of that in the future? The, is there a deadline for the rest of the neighbors to put in sidewalks there? Most of uh, I'll answer that if that's okay. <laughs> Most of the time when we install sidewalks, there is either a long corridor where the right of way is already established. So, for example, Swinton Avenue South, we just completed sidewalks from Southwest Second Avenue to Southwest Tenth Avenue. The right of way there was already established, and we were able to get transportation alternatives fundings from the Palm Beach TPA to assist the city in develop uh, a, a comprehensive sidewalk network, sidewalks on both sides of the road. We're putting in lighting um, where there are single family homes and areas which were platted in varying widths. So, for example, this area was platted with a 40 foot right of way. It takes time. And as properties redevelop and as properties either add on to their building footprint or they um, take certain actions, there's a very there's a specific number of them in the code, but generally we get them when the buildings are added on to. Um, that's when the city in, uh, requires the installation of a sidewalk in front of their property, but that property is then dedicated to the city to take to um, to maintain. So when the sidewalk's constructed and dedicated and whatnot, the city will take on the ownership of that sidewalk, um, even if it's just in front of one house. Okay. So free, at this point, it'll be a freestanding because I think the, the house to the right was not, the sidewalk's not there yet either. Correct. The corner house. Okay. Okay. Well, um, there's any other comments, suggestions from my members of the Board of Adjustments? No. Uh, I believe uh, we now have the three options. Is that correct, William, that we should uh, read aloud? So, so actually, well, like, Brian, do you have something to add first? I got a request. Could Mr. Brito and Mr. Ballou please state their address for the record? Uh, 115 Northeast 16th Court. Okay. Your, your work. Your, your work address would suffice. 2559 Webb Avenue, Suite Number 2, Delray Beach, Florida, 33444. Mr. Ballou, are you still connected? Uh, you're muted, sir. <laughs> We can see you, but we can't hear you. Here we go. Here we go. 2976 Norway Pine Lane, Montana, Florida, 33462. Thank you, sir. Great. Thank you, Brian. Um, so, Chair, with the Board of Adjustments, as a reminder, I have um, the board order. And I'll read through that order and it actually contains all six elements and after each element, the board will vote yes or no. Um, they are written again in a way that yes is in support of the variance and no is um, not in support of the variance. There's no trick um, language on these. After all six are read, if it has received four yes votes on all four, we still do a motion, but it has to be for approval. If for any reason one of the six elements does not receive four positive votes, then we still can't do a motion, but it has to be uh, for denial based upon uh, the way the board voted on the elements. 
So uh, I can begin that process, but before I do, I just want to um, talk briefly, Mr. Uh, Brito and the D's. Um, our regulations require you to obtain four yes votes. On a normal um, board evening, or typically we have five members, so you need four out of five. Uh, tonight, unfortunately, we only have four members. So in order for your variance to pass, all four of the board members that are present have to vote yes on all six of the elements. Um, historically, when we're in this situation, if you would prefer to wait for another meeting um, so that you can have five members, so that you could still have you know, four yeses with a no instead of needing all four yeses, um, we are typically happy to accommodate that. So at this point, it's it's up to you guys. If you want us to proceed, we can do that, but know that all four members that are present have to vote yes. There's no wiggle room there. Um, if you'd prefer to wait until we have a full board member, uh, full board of five, um, we're happy to accommodate that. So it's, it's up to you if you'd like us to go ahead and begin the voting process or if you'd like to wait for the next meeting in which we have five members. We, we would like a vote. Okay, okay. great. With the yeah. All right, so uh, board members, again, I'm going to begin reading the order. Um, after each element, um, I'll ask you, we, we don't do roll call anymore, so you can just all just say yes um, or no out loud. So this is the City of Delray Beach Board of Adjustment final order uh, for petition 2021-097-VAR-BOA for the property at 115 Northeast 16th Court for the March 4th, 2021 meeting. Pursuant to LDR section 2.4.7A5, following consideration of all the evidence and testimony, the Board of Adjustment for the City of Delray Beach finds as follows. One, that special conditions and circumstances exist which are peculiar to the land structure or building involved and which are not generally applicable to all the land structures or buildings subject to the same zoning. Board vote? Yes. 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 Two, that the literal interpretation of the LDRs deprives the applicant of rights commonly enjoyed by other properties subject to the same zoning. Board? Yes. 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 Three, that special conditions and circumstances exist that were not the result of the applicant's own actions. Board? Yes. 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 Four, that the granting of a variance does not confer a special privilege on the applicant that is denied to other land structures or builds under the same zoning. Yes. 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 Five, that the reasons set forth in the variance petition justify granting the variance. Board? Yes. 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 Six, that the granting of the variance is in harmony with the purpose and intent of existing regulations, meaning it will not be injurious to the neighborhood. Board? Yes. Great. So the board has voted uh, four affirmative votes for all six elements. So at this time, if someone could just, um, you don't have to read necessarily that whole uh, blurb, but just I need a motion to approve the variance request. Please. I motion to approve. Second. Third. <laughs> uh, Rochelle, did you get the um, the two names for the motion and second? I have Alexander Candia it made the motion and Robert Cohn seconded. That is correct. Can you please do a roll call? Sure. Michael O'Connor is absent. Vlad Dumitrescu? Yes. yes. Robert Cohen? Yes. Alexander Candia? Yes. Roland Williams? Yes. Great. Uh, congratulations, Mr. and Mrs. D. Your variance has been approved. Thank you very Thank much. You. Good luck with it. <laughs> Thank you. It's going to look very pretty there. <laughs> Thank you all. Who can I pass the ball back to? I believe Anthea is going to be presenting the next item. I got so it. I'll do that. Get off now. Yeah. Yes. Mr. Mrs. D, Thank Ms. Frito, thank you all for your time tonight. We appreciate thank you and your efforts. Good night. Best of luck. Thank you. Thank you. Hello. Hello, Anthea. Rochelle, if you can, 
if you can just pass the ball actually to uh, the podium for Gary Leopolis, he'll have the first part of the presentation. Um, but good evening, Anthea Genetis, Development Services Director for the record. Um, the next item is uh, 1221 Lang Street, um, which is consideration of uh, several waivers or variances, excuse me, to um, LDR section 4.4.3 F1, which provides the development standards um, for the adopted beach property owner's design manual through reference. Um, so the requested variances are to certain sections of section one, which is the district regulations and incentives section. And they relate mostly to building setback and um, also to maximum lot coverage. And Mr. Eliopoulos is here to give you an overview of um, the project think, and I don't think we had him uh, sworn in yet, if I recall. So Rochelle, we may need to swear in um, our applicants here. William, do, do you need to review the my in parte situation or not? Yeah, let Rochelle get um, everybody sworn in and then we'll take care of the ex parte communication. Okay, I see mm, Gary Eliopoulos, are you in there alone or is um, Alex with you? <laughs> Alex is with me. Okay, yep. so I need both of you and Max Weinberg. Here. Okay, um, all three of you, can you please raise your right hand? By the authority vested in me as a notary of the state of Florida, do you swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. I do. I do. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Rochelle. Um, on the ex parte, I know, Mr. Cohen, you have um, that the state, state that you began on the previous item. Uh, just a reminder, especially since you are the final board of decision making. Um, the ex parte communications, uh, try to be as detailed as you can. So they need to know, you know, who it was um, that you spoke with. And then, you know, that message or information that was conveyed to you so that, um, you know, the applicant's rights are all, all protected in the instance. So we'll start with you because I know you have one. So if you'll just yeah. share again, you know, who you spoke with and, and the content of the conversation. Yes. Uh, I said I received a telephone call today. Uh, Fortunately, unfortunately, I was in the middle of golf, so I only had a minute or two to speak. So we didn't go into a lot of detail. But uh, Chris Davey, who um, a lot of people know, uh, is currently on the board of zoning, uh, has been on the board of adjustment. He's my neighbor, two houses down, as well as a personal friend. So when he called me, I didn't know what he was calling about, whether it was a homeowner association issue, of which I'm a board member there too, or a personal issue. So I listened to him. And he started out saying that, I believe verbatim, he had a, he's calling about a case that he knew was up, that he has a friend who's interested in it, and I asked him, I said, uh, well, I don't really want to talk about it, I know that there's two cases on the net, and uh, just so he knew what he was talking about, I said, is this the one that has the 1899 survey? He said, yeah, that's the one. I said, well, okay, but, you know, I really can't talk about it, and he just, he basically said, he wanted to let me know that a number of, I'll call them powers that be in the city, uh, historic preservation concerns are interested in this neighborhood and other neighborhoods in making sure that they are historically preserved. At which point I said, thank you very much. And my minute's up and I'll, <laughs> I'll stop the conversation now. Okay. Uh, is that the only ex parte communication? Um, I also looked in the Google Earth of this neighborhood. Okay, Vlad. Um, Chair, did you have any ex parte communication? Uh, I, I received a uh, text saying we had a meeting tonight and make sure that uh, we gave it good details. And that was it. I said, we always do. I never spoke to Mr. Davey. Okay, so that text message was from Mr. Davey? Yes. Okay. Great. And then uh, I believe Alex is the last one. No, no ex parte. Okay, great. All right, Anthea, we're sworn in. We're ex parte. It's, uh, you've got the ball, I hope, but your show. Yeah. Well, um, this is the applicant's request. So, Mr. Iliopoulos, are you ready to present? Do you need me to step in and help you share the screen? Or are you in good shape? Um, actually, what I'd like to do is request for a deferment. Um, I didn't realize that it wasn't a full board. And as the attorney did explain, you do need a supermajority, which is all four. 
So uh, we're requesting that if that's allowed. I uh, just talked to my client, and that's what we prefer to do. Okay. Okay. If if I could just um, make a just with William, this is a notice item, and so we do have a quorum to continue the item to a date time certain in order to preserve the notice that's gone out. Um, if that's okay. Yeah. All, all the attorneys' heads are nodding up and down. So yes, if we can, Thank you. if we can do a, 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 a continuance to a date certain, Anthea, if you can give us that date, that'd be great. Uh, I should be able to give you that date, right? Um, uh, I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna pull up the file to see when your next meeting is. Actually, hold on, just a second, everyone. Hang on. What? Oh, first Thursday of the month. We're only doing one a month while we're coveting. Yes. Okay. So this is the first Thursday of. Are you sure you want the first Thursday of the month? It is April first. Approved, <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. No. Uh, yeah. The Sorry, first but... April first. <laughs> so that that's the next date. Okay. Is that fine? I assume April first. Yeah, sure. Okay. All right. So um so this will just be a simple motion, guys. Just a motion to continue. Um, the 1221 Lang Street item uh, to the April 1st, 2021 uh, Board of Adjustment meeting. Okay, do we have a... Other than the chair has to make that motion. <laughs> right, I move that we continue this item to April 1st, 2021. I second that. And Lynn, do you think we need the, the time or the dates fine? 5 p.m. 5.01 p.m. I'm sorry. Yeah, uh, just I guess, cutting out. Uh, okay, I, th that's I think fine. I saw that's fine. Great. All right, uh, Marcel, can you do the roll call, please? Michael O'Connor is absent. Vlad Dumitrescu? Yes. Robert Cohen? Yes. Alexander Kendia? Yes. Carlin Williams? Yes. Yeah. Great. Thank you, um, Gary and Max. Sorry we didn't have at five tonight, but we'll look forward to seeing you guys in a month. No problem. Thank you so much, guys. Appreciate it. This week, sir, we, we really thought we had five. So if all of you who are here now can, can mark your calendars and then we'll do our best to track down at least one more um, voting member for the meeting. Thank you all so much for attending though. We really appreciate it. Okay. Oh, you're quite welcome. Okay. Thank you for all the what you uh, do. And Thea, the next thing is comments by staff. Do you have any comments or things? I do not, I do not have... Um, any specific comments to make, but I'm here to answer any questions if the board has, or first you go, you have board, you have attorney yes. comments. Excuse me. Comments by board attorney, um, not, nothing for me, just thank you guys um, for being here. I know it's, I've had this type a couple of times where we had four and sometimes they go forward like they did and sometimes, you know, they want that extra insurance uh, to have that fifth member. So um, <clears throat> keep an eye on your uh, city email as well. I know on this item that got postponed, we received a number of letters and emails kind of at the, in, in the last 24 or 12 hours. Um, those would have been forwarded to you. Um, so just, just make sure to check that email because understandably you may not have seen it since they came in so late, um, but we'll, they'll be there for um, April 1st for certain. So. Are, are you are you speaking about letters germane to one of these cases that were we were received via our city email? I I did not get anything. I got an email late today inviting me to join the WebEx, which didn't work. So Rochelle had to send me a second invite on my personal email, and that worked. That's the second time when the invite on my city email did not work. It did not like the email address. My email, they explained my email address did not match my name as a panelist and I couldn't log in. So when I got the one on my personal, that worked. But I certainly saw no letters attached to anything today via my city email. Okay, Ken, uh, do me a favor. Um, if you'll do one more step for me, just check something like the spam folder or anything like that. And if you don't have it, 
um, try to contact Rochelle and we'll figure out um, the best manner to get you a copy to make sure that you have it before the April 1st meeting. And sure. well, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we need to, we, yeah, we need to resolve the email issue too. So we're, Rochelle, maybe we can set an appointment up directly with them. Um, Mr. Cohen and, and a, an IT representative and get just a date time to really tackle whatever is, is preventing this from working. Sure, I'll put in the That'd be great. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right, perfect. So uh, last but not least, we have a uh, board comment. So does anybody uh, has anything they need to add, questions to ask, those types of things? Now's the time. Um, oh. You know, is it... It was interesting tonight with the uh, dedication at the new 2020 code for uh, the street width. So is that street 50 foot is now throughout the city or just certain neighborhoods? So, so it's not the street width. It's the you had left the building because we're all separated. We can't tell who's here. So <laughs> great. Um, so I'll let I'll let our transportation planner answer these questions. So um, I'll be happy to shoot this to you in an email or give it to Rochelle. Maybe she can distribute it. In our comprehensive plan, we have a classification for other local streets. This is consistent with what was in the previous comprehensive plan before, um, except before it was 60 feet and generally we took easements, which was acceptable, whereas now we're going with 50. And it's different based on different classifications. So an arterial road like US-1 Federal Highway has a greater right-of-way need than a local street like Northeast 1, uh, 115 Northeast 16 Court. <laughs> so there, it's different and I, I can send you that transportation element but, uh, and you'll be able to see why we're doing the right-of-way requests that we're doing. It provides a lot of background and justification for what we're doing and how we're doing it and some of the planning efforts that are going to go in, where we're going to be expanding and prioritizing sidewalks and bicycle infrastructure as well. Okay. I, now that you mentioned, I do have one little thing to add to that, which is interesting. Uh, what happened to the one-way streets? Are they also... Uh, subject to the same possible option because technically the paving could be narrow. But they're, they're subject to the same criteria set forth in the, the mobility plan or the mobility element. Okay. Okay. It's just that you are correct. The right of way width as a whole is narrower because the pavement's expected to be less than that. I mean, you read, for example, a two way or I see. one way, one lane could be 10 to 11 feet wide. Yeah. A two-way street is typically 10 to 11 feet per lane, so you need more room, and then you also need greater recovery area. So there's lots of things that go into it, and lots of calculations. Yeah, no, I wasn't sure if it makes a difference. There's not too many streets like that. I yeah, I don't see many ones. So it's always kind of cute. All right. Yeah, you're left. I like one-way streets. Yeah, no, actually, it works really well. <laughs> yeah. I like roundabouts too, but we won't get into that. Um, <laughs> except, except to be careful yeah, no, people coming just, the other way. and just to thank you all for your time this actually is the first variance that I was asked to process I typically don't get variance requests you won't see me very much um, but as a you know, transportation planner it's important especially with dealing with right of way issues it's important for me to learn this process and to be a part of the team that's able to bring stuff before you and be in front of you and answer questions so uh, my, you have my email, I believe. It's in the staff report. You can send me specific questions if you've got any. Okay. Okay. Thank you, you did, did a great job for my team. That was very, very good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Glad. And thank you for your time, everyone. Have a good night. Thank you. Good night, everybody. Good night. Signing off. Bye. Good night, everyone. Bye. Good night. Sure. Sure. We need to formally end the meeting. Or are we good? Yeah. Oh. Adjourn. <laughs> oh, that's good. I think lost that opportunity. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. We We're good, right? Okay. Yep. Six thirty so. is the time, and if anybody's Thank you wondering. So much. <laughs> Six thirty on the job. Excellent. All right. Thank you.